first fix carpentry. In this movie, we'll be looking at the first fix carpentry section of the pricing sheet. The first fix carpentry section of our pricing sheet is where we allow for all the carpentry work that's required before plastering. If we scroll down, we will see that this section has lots of different subsections to deal with the different elements of the work. We'll also notice that much of the information is already filled in. The NHE Plus has used all of the details that we entered in previous sections to calculate this for us. We'll now go through each of the subsections. We'll look at what's been worked out and see how straightforward fine-tuning and checking the details is. Flooring to masonry floor. If we're laying insulation and floorboarding on insulation, so a floating floor, we need to allow for this here in this subsection of our first fix carpentry. This will be calculated for us when we arrive as the programme will have looked at what we've already entered and worked out the area of masonry floor for us. We can see the number of square metres of masonry floor that these costs are based on here. It is a yellow box so we can adjust this if required. This thumbnail picture is really helpful. We can use it to select the masonry floor types that we want to floor. Let's click it. The visual reference shows us all the possible masonry floor types. We'll notice that by default each one of these is ticked. This ensures that if any of these floor types have been entered earlier, they will be picked up by the programme here. We'll also see that beneath each picture is a yellow box. This box will contain the area, in square metres, of each of the masonry flooring types that we've already entered earlier in our pricing sheet. We can see that on our job, all of our masonry floor area is oversight. The other types of masonry floor all have zero in the box. But if there were various types of masonry floor in the overall total, this form gives us lots of flexibility to fine tune what elements will require a flooring structure. Just to show you, if for any reason we did not want to allow for any floating floors or flooring structures on our oversight, we could just untick our oversight option. As oversight is the only type of masonry floor, the yellow box is empty and all of the costs are removed. Let's switch that back on. Another thing to remember, as the text in this picture explains, that as we are in the first fix, the flooring that we allow for here will normally be the structural floor, rather than the finished floor. An exception to this though may be T&G pine flooring. If the finished flooring is to be laminated, then it would be normal to allow for chipboard or plyboard sheet here and account for the laminate floor finish in the second fix. OK, so we're doing a floating floor in here. Let's take a look at what's been worked out. We can allow for the cleaning of the masonry floor. We'll put in a couple of hours to remove any compo that's come off the blocks and stuck to the floor. This will give us time to clean it and sweep it off before we lay the floor. The insulation is here. We can see the quantity and we can adjust the insulation if we want in the drop down menu. We also have the option to switch this off and remove it from our costs if it's not needed. Here's the polythene. Again, we can change the type of polythene and view the costs. Flooring clamps are automatically worked out for us. These would be more commonly used for a T&G pine floor. We won't require these, so we will switch them off. We can select the type of flooring here in the drop-down. We can see that we have the option for chipboard, T&G pine and laminated. To adjust it, just click the flooring type required. Then use the drop-down menu. This will now be loaded with the available options for that floor. Just select the one required. We are doing chipboard, so we will switch this back. We'll choose this waterproof chipboard. Glue is calculated and included. We can click the question mark to see how it's being worked out. And if we don't want it, we can switch it off. Sleepers are included. So this is if we want to put battens down with insulation in between. If these are needed, we can view and adjust the centres here in the picture. We don't require these, so we will switch them off. OK, so as we have seen, if we have masonry floor areas, the NHE Plus automatically works everything we may require for the flooring structure. We simply check the details and, if necessary, add or remove items so it meets the exact needs of our job. Flooring to joist floor. All of the costs for any flooring to joist floors are here. This will be calculated for us when we arrive, as the programme will have looked at what we've already entered and work out the area of joist floor for us. We can see the number in square metres of joist floor area that these costs are based on here. It is a yellow box, so we can adjust this if required. This thumbnail picture is really helpful. Let's click it. We can use it to select the joist floor types that we want flooring on. The visual reference shows us the possible joist floor types. We'll notice that by default, each one of these is ticked. This ensures that if any of these floor types have been entered earlier, 
they will be picked up by the program here. We'll also see beneath each picture the area in square metres of each of the joist flooring types that we've already entered in our pricing sheet. We can see that on our job, our entire joist flooring area is on the upper floors. The ground floor joist area has a zero in it. We just ensure the relevant joist areas are ticked and the programme will use the area to work out the flooring structure for them. Another thing to remember, as the text in this picture explains, that as we're in the first fix, the flooring that we allow for here will normally be the structural floor, rather than the finished floor. An exception to this, though, may be T&G pine flooring. If the finished flooring is to be laminated, then it would be normal to allow for chipboard or plyboard sheet here and account for the laminate floor finish in the second fix. OK, let's take a look at what's been worked out. The first item is insulation for any ground floor joists. We don't have these, so nothing's worked out. The programme separates the ground and upper floors, as it may be that the insulation requirements are different. The upper floor insulation's here. We can adjust the material, view the quantity, and if for any reason we don't require it, we can switch it off. Next we've got the flooring clamps. We aren't doing a T and G floor, so we won't need these. We'll switch them off. All the costs are removed. We can select the type of flooring here in the drop-down. Options being chipboard, T and G and laminated. If we adjust this, we need to remember to change the material. So if we select T and G, the material drop-down will adjust and contain all the available T and G flooring materials for us to choose from. We will be using chipboard, so we'll switch this all back. Here's the glue. We can switch this off like this. We do need this, so let's switch it back on. Tank stand and catwalk. If a tank stand and catwalk is required in the roof structure, we can allow for it in our first fix carpentry, in the tank stand and catwalk subsection. OK, so all we need to do is tell the programme the number of these that will be required. We'll enter one into this blue box. Everything calculates. Let's take a look. The first item is the timber for our node point bearers. Let's click the question mark so we can see that two node point bearers are allowed per tank stand. We can adjust this number if we want. We can also see the default length of each one. Again, this is fully adjustable. Let's do the same with the main cross members. So here we can see how the programme is working this out. So this is the number of main cross members and this is the length of a single one. The lovely thing about this is that if we build our tank stands differently, we can just quickly adjust the criteria in the pictures. If we did this in our master file, it would be set this way every time we priced, saving us even more time. Tank bearers are here. Again, we've got a clear visual reference that shows us exactly what's being calculated. And it's completely adjustable. We can select the type of flooring that will be used on the actual catwalk. Just use the drop-down menu. Make your selection, then choose the material. The length of the catwalk can be changed in this picture if we want. All of this was worked out by entering a single number and we can adjust the criteria quickly and easily by using the interactive picture. Internal wall stud work. In this subsection of the first fixed carpentry, we need to enter the details of any internal stud work walls. The programme will then use this information to calculate everything required, including the plasterboard and any other items in subsequent sections of the pricing sheet. Let's take a look. First, we check that the stud work type is correct. By default it's timber, but we can change this to metal stud work if required. We do want timber stud work, but let's see how this works. We click the thumbnail, click the metal option. We're provided with a form here. Check the default materials. If required, change them using the drop-down. Click enter. We're now set to price metal stud work. Let's switch this back to timber. Click the picture, click timber, Check the material selections, enter the details. It's now changed back. OK, we've got red boxes at the top of this section. We enter the length of the stud work. We have a visual reference here if required. Our internal stud work is 11 linear metres. Now, enter the stud work height. Let's click the question mark. We're provided with further clarification about the measurement that the programme's asking for. We can also enter the height in here too. Let's put in 2.3 linear metres. This red box is where we would tell the programme about any bracing that needed to be done to the length of partition wall that we've already entered in the first red box. This is more likely to be used if a complete timber frame build is being done. Our stud work walls don't need any bracing, but to allow for it, just enter the length of stud work that needs it in this box, and the programme will take care of the rest. We can view, and if required, adjust the centres for our studs here. We also need to enter any internal or external corners. We've got one, 
We don't have any tea sections, but if there are any, just enter the quantity in here. Now we enter the number of bottom plates. If we click the red question mark, we're provided with a pictorial reference. We want two bottom plates, and we'll enter that in here. We're going to have one row of top plates and one row of centre noggins. The programme will use the information that we've entered to calculate the exact quantity of studs we'll need. Wastage isn't added. It will also calculate the actual length of the stud. So it will look at the height we've put in, and it will look at the thickness of the bottom and top plates. So in our job, we've selected timber that's 38mm thick. We've got two bottom plates and one top plate. So it's deducting these from the height we entered. Just to show you, if we adjust the timber for our bottom plate to one that is 47mm thick, see? The programme readjusts the length of the stud that we'll need. We'll just change this back. If we want to adjust the type of timber that's going to be used in our stud work, use these drop-down menus. The costs and quantities for the timber that we'll need are shown here. We'll notice that this has a heading. It's called Section 1. OK, so here we can see the number of linear metres of timber that will be required for our bottom plates, top plates and noggins. We can see the costs and quantities for the studs are worked out on a per stud basis. The NHE Plus has looked at the per metre price of the selected timber and multiplied this by the length of the stud. The blue text here explains this. Below this, we can see the plasterboard for the internal stud work wall that we've just entered. It's called Plasterboard in Section 1. Everything's calculated for us. We just need to check and, if necessary, fine-tune the details. It's important to note that the automatic calculations are based on there being one layer of plasterboard on both sides of the stud work. Later in the pricing sheet, the programme uses this information to calculate any plastering, coving, skirting and decorating that we have selected. So we do need to make sure that the information in here meets the requirements of our job. On some jobs, perhaps only one side of the internal partition wall will require plasterboard. On other jobs, for fireproofing perhaps, one or both sides will require a double layer of plasterboard. Tweaking this is really straightforward. All we need to do is use these red boxes. Let's start by looking at the additional plasterboard options. Let's click the thumbnail. This gives us a really useful picture and we can enter the information in here straight away. OK, so if we want any areas of plasterboard to have a double layer, we need to tell the program the length and height of the area that will need it. The blue text provides further examples for this. Whatever we enter in here, the programme will only add on one additional layer to the area. So if we entered 11 linear metres, only additional plasterboard for one side of our partition wall would be allowed. If, for example, our partition walls needed a double layer on both sides, we would need to enter 22 linear metres for the length and 2.3 for the height. We need to account for both sides manually. Let's enter it in. See? Everything's now calculated based on this. OK, we don't need any additional layers, so we'll just remove this. The deduction of the plasterboard works in exactly the same way. Let's click the thumbnail. So again, we need to tell the program the area that won't require plasterboard. Like when we add plasterboard, when we enter the length and width in here, the program is only going to deduct one layer of plasterboard for that area. We don't need to make any deductions to this. So let's take a look at what's been worked out. The plasterboard is here. We can see the quantity of sheets that will be needed and we can change the material if we want. We didn't enter any bracing for our partition walls. If we had, this would have been calculated for us. We have the option for insulation. We'll switch this on. Instantly it calculates. The material can be changed in the drop-down menu if required. We do have some blue boxes. This is where we would allow for any door linings in these partition walls. We can enter single or double doors. We'll put in three single door linings. It's important to remember to enter these here if they're needed. The NHE Plus will make all the relevant deductions for us, including the plasterboard. As we can see, the amount needed has been reduced. It will also adjust any plastering, coving, skirting, decorating and so on. Plus, it will now allow for the door and all its fixings and furniture in the second fix, just from entering that one number. If the internal stud work on a job needs to be broken down into sections, for example, if the heights or materials required differ in various parts of the building, then we can add additional stud work sections. Just click this button here. The programme will then add in a further stud work section. It will be set out and work in exactly the same way as the one we've just looked at. Additional sections are numbered. So, for example, if we entered a further section, it would be called Section 2, and so on. General items. 
Here are all the general first fix items. We'll notice that most of this is already worked out for us. Let's start at the top and work our way down. OK, so first we have the single door lining for masonry walls. The NHE Plus calculated this for us when we entered the details into the lintel section of the pricing sheet. We'll notice that we can jump to that section from this picture if any adjustments are required. We can also change the material in the drop-down. We don't have any double door linings, so nothing's been calculated. This is where we would allow for stairs. We do need one flight of stairs, so we'll enter one in the blue box. We can change the type of staircase or the allowance in the drop-down. We'll allow £1,000 for our staircase. Newel posts, half newel posts and stair nosing are automatically worked out when we enter any stairs. We can view how they're being calculated by clicking on the question marks. So we can see that two newel posts are allowed for each staircase that's entered. We can change this. We can also switch any of these options off by checking the boxes like this. All the costs will be removed. We do want all these, so we'll switch them back on. Window boards are worked out for us. Let's click the question mark. OK, so we can see that the programme looks at the length of each window entered, then adds on this amount of overhang to each side. It then works out the total length of board that we will need. We can adjust this overhang in here if we wish. We don't have any block and beam on our upper floors, so block and beam ceiling battens haven't been calculated. If these are required, we can click on the question mark and view how they're being worked out, and adjust the automatic calculation if we want. The plasterboard for the ceilings to intermittent floor ceilings is worked out. Regardless of the flooring type, be it joist, block and beam, the programme will look at the area and work out the plasterboard that will be required for the ceiling. We can change the material in this drop-down if we want. We'll notice that the plasterboard to roof ceilings is worked out separately. This is so we have the option to easily select a different type of plasterboard. In the roof it may be that we want a foil-backed or thermal plasterboard, or perhaps on the intermittent ceilings, if there are joists, we may want a 9mm plasterboard. By working these out separately, the program makes fine-tuning really straightforward. We can very quickly specify the type of ceiling that we want in the roof. This feature is brilliant and so easy to use. As we can see, each of the roof sections that we have entered are listed. We'll also see that we're provided with three options for the type of ceiling. There's a standard ceiling, a vaulted ceiling and a raised tie ceiling. Drilling into the detail and specifying the type of ceiling we want for each roof structure couldn't be simpler. We literally click the picture. Let's look at the different options using our main roof. We'll start with a standard ceiling. Click it. The area of plasterboard we would need for a standard ceiling is instantly worked out. Let's switch it to vaulted. Just click the picture. The area is here. Now let's look at the raised tie option. Click it. We are given an additional form. We just need to tell the program the height that it is to raise the ceiling to. The visual reference provides further clarification on the measurement that needs to be entered. We'll leave this as one linear metre. Enter the details. It's all worked out. Whether we have just one or ten sections of roof, this feature is available on every single one. OK, our main roof is actually going to have a standard ceiling, so we'll click that. The roof over lounge, we did remove the ceiling joists from this. This will be having a vaulted ceiling, so we'll select that option. The roof over front will also have a standard ceiling. Click that option. Finally, the roof over the games room, this is going to have a vaulted ceiling. We click that, so everything is set to our requirements. Enter the details. Everything is worked out for us based on our selections. Now we just check the material in the drop-down. Almost all of the general items in our first fix are worked out for us. We just enter any stair requirements and check the details. And if fine-tuning is required, the built-in pictures make it really easy. Internal plasterboard to external perimeter walls. The internal plasterboard to external perimeter walls subsection is here. If our walls are a timber frame construction, the NHE Plus will automatically work out the plasterboard for the internal side of the external perimeter walls here. If we click on the question mark, the blue text explains that if our external perimeter walls are not timber frame construction, then the internal plasterboard for them will be calculated in the plastering section. Our wall structure isn't a timber frame, but if it was, all the internal plasterboard for the external perimeter walls would be automatically worked out here. As this is calculated independently, it gives us greater flexibility when choosing the plasterboard material that we will require. We can increase or reduce the number of layers of plasterboard to the area by using the red boxes here. They work in exactly the same way as the ones we've looked at in the internal wall stud work section of this movie. Any steel mesh to wall plate is also worked out here. The program will look at the length of the timber wall plates going on masonry walls and use this information to work out how much mesh we will need.
We can change the material in the drop down menu. If we don't need it, we do have the option to switch it off. Just click the button. We do want this, so we will switch it back on. Fitting windows and doors. The labour costs for the fitting of our windows and doors are located here in the first fix carpentry section. As this info icon and blue text explains, we opted to have dummy frames when we were entering our windows and doors. Therefore, the program told us it was going to move the fitting costs for the actual windows and doors that we'd chosen to the first fix. And here they are. The material costs for the windows and doors are in the window and door section of our quote. And the blue text here reminds us this is just labour costs. The program has brought together all of our windows and is showing the labour costs for the fitting of all of them. Here is the fitting cost for our door frame and here are the costs for all our patio door frames. As we've selected a plastic door and plastic patio doors, the program knows that they come as a complete unit. Therefore, it only calculated the labour costs for the fitting of the frame. The doors are included within that. We don't have any French or garage doors, so no fitting costs are required. We do have the option to allow for cleaning up after the first fix. These hours are worked out as a percentage of the whole work section. We can click the blue question mark for further information. This would normally be carried out by a labourer, but we can adjust the tradesperson by using this drop-down if required. This is in a yellow box, so we can adjust it like this. We'll put this back to 3%. If this didn't need to be allowed for, just put 0 in the percentage box and nothing will calculate. Fixings. All of the fixings for our first fix section have been brought together here in the fixing subsection. The blue text tells us the total. By default, this section is closed to keep the pricing sheet streamlined, but we can open it and view the details if we want. Just click this button. It is unlikely that we would drill into this detail when doing a quote. This is something that's best done in the master file, but we will take a quick look at what's been worked out. We are doing a floating floor on our masonry floor areas, so we don't have any sleepers and we don't require nails for our chipboard, but we can see how the program works the fixings for these tasks out by clicking on the question marks. We can adjust the settings if we want, by changing the default measurements in the yellow boxes. Rule plugs are next. The fixings for our chipboard flooring and fixings to joist floorings are here. We do require these and the program has worked out how many we need. We can view how it's calculating by clicking this question mark. This is the criteria. So the board size. We can adjust the spacing between the fixings and the joist battens. If required, we can change the number of additional fixings for noggins and cutboards. The blue text here tells us the number of fixings that will be required per board, based on the criteria. If TNG flooring is chosen for either joist or masonry floors, then all the fixings would be automatically worked out. If we click the question marks, we can see how the program would calculate these and adjust the defaults if we want. The tank stand fixings are broken down into flooring fixings and tank stand fixings. We have a tank stand, so these are worked out and we can view and adjust the settings in the visual references. We will just look at the frame wall fixings. The clearly marked picture makes understanding how the program is calculating the fixings easy and fine tuning them if we do something different is really straightforward. We can drill into this level of detail for every single fixing that's required. We just click on the red question mark, see how it's being calculated and change it if we wish. Where necessary, we're provided with additional blue text and info icons to make sure we always know exactly what the program's doing. We can adjust the materials selected for any of these fixings by using the drop-down menu. We may want to use the magnifying glass like this, as it does make the longer descriptions much easier to read. Now we've taken a look, let's close this section back up to keep our pricing sheet streamlined. Extra row and totals. The intuitive nature of the NHE Plus means that when we get to the first fixed carpentry section, most of the work has been done for us, based on what we've already entered in our quote. It's logically laid out and in the order that the work would take place. All of the common and not so common items are accounted for. But if there is an additional item or task that we want to include in the first fix, we can add it in. We just click the extra row button that's located here and follow the built-in instructions. Or we can click this info icon and we're provided with information about adding an extra row. The totals for our first fix are here. So our materials, hours, labor, an overall total. We can click this button and view a snapshot summary of the first fix section of our pricing sheet if we want. To go back to the pricing sheet, just click this button and we will return to the top of the first fix carpentry section.